All right, here's the deal. Two Brooklyn moms. Exactly, exhausted. Exhausted, <laughs> but we like it that way. <laughs> right, because the truth is, you wouldn't have to be in a movie or a play a year if you really didn't want to be these days. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, w I would need to work for my soul, and I have private school to pay for, but um, theater I need for my soul, really. First time he brought me up here. Speaking of the theater, Snow Geese. Yes. The latest theater undertaking. Snow Geese, because a lot of people have been thought that I've been saying Snow Geese. Like Hoagies? Like Snuggies or Hoagies, but it's Snow Geese. Snow like, <laughs> Geese. <laughs> yeah. You play a matriarch. Your son's about to deploy to World War right, One. Right. Uh, your husband's died and left you with all this debt. So, some pretty big curveballs. What in your real life have been like the biggest curveballs that you did not see coming? It's the bigger curveballs for me. Sometimes I can sort of pull myself together and maintain some sanity and, and, and ability to move forward. It's the tiny ones that really throw me. I'm very impatient, so I tend to try to you know, if I'm worried about something, I really tend to try to make things happen and push, and I wish I had that ability to just be like, it's gonna be okay, things, things are going to go well, you know, and really believe it, and I'm trying to learn that. It doesn't come naturally to me. The feeling might not come naturally to you, but I will say, taking a look at your resume, things have gone pretty well. I mean, you have been in some epic things. Portrait of a lady, boys on the side. My favorite, Grand Canyon. Married men suck. Weeds and weeds, never lived in weeds. You might not want to cause me stress. I'm in a very delicate state. I, I love doing that show and I, I don't mind talking about it. And, and I think it's a good idea to legalize marijuana, even though, I mean, uh, quite honestly, I don't even really like the smell so much. People do offer me pot and so generously give me their homegrown strains of this, which I, again, appreciate and pass along, but. It's a nice thing to it's, say. It's but not what? my drug of choice, really. uh, What is your drug of choice? I guess I would have to say, um, uh, I like jewelry a lot. Uh, no, boring, like come on, shoes. that's not a drug, no. Like... All right, back to your work. Oh God, I'm sorry. <laughs> you, I recognize you now. Angels in America, we. I was really, really lucky to get all those parts. They just sort of fell in front of me and I was really, really lucky to get to play them. Time, and out, I got time out, time out, time out. So why can't any actor sit on this dude and say, yeah, yeah, I earned that, that's right. I am a great actor I do and think... I got that part. <laughs> I think there's something to the fact that you, your instrument is what you use, it's yourself, it's so much of you. It's very hard without feeling like an egomaniac to give yourself any credit for anything, whereas I, I write as well, I write for Esquire, and it's much easier for me to say that was a well-written piece. I'm able to have a sense of distance that I, it's difficult to have when you're an actor. What are you writing for Esquire? Uh, I just wrote something about my appreciation of undergroomed men. I, I do have an appreciation for a certain rumpled quality. I mean, I've just woken up off of a park bench. I don't know what that says about me. You don't want a guy who's gonna... Uh... Well, somebody who's just, you know, robbed a bank and is, and you know, but... If they're just robbed a bank, they're rich, so you definitely want them. True. You've got two kids, I've got two kids. Both of my children are adopted and one, one of yours is. Mm. And I get some really whacked out uh, questions yeah. about my son. Yeah. What's the dumbest question you've ever gotten about your daughter? What's really odd to me is that people don't understand that when adoption is the first choice, is that they assume that, oh, you couldn't have another baby or this, whereas I wanted to adopt my whole life. That was the first choice. It wasn't, you know, a default. It wasn't um, the lesser option. Now, your daughter's from Ethiopia, and yet your main cause, your main passion, the thing that yeah. keeps you up at night worrying uh, is Uganda. There's a charity that I'm really passionate about, Hope North, and there's a site, hopenorth.org, where you can go and sponsor a student. And this man that I met, Okello Sam, um, he's created a place where children can have, they can have a home, they can be safe. They're children who've suffered atrocities that no one probably wants to hear in this program, but they're just unimaginable horrors, and I just want to help them and help the person who's helping them who's doing the real heavy lifting. Thank you so much for coming to Thanks talk to you. Stu. It's awesome. <laughs> Adorable. She's pretty cute. <laughs>